Hi guys and welcome to the workshop. When I was last at the sawmill, I picked up this piece of uh, oak from their odds and sods section. They got a rack with odds and sods in it. Um, and I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna try and make a big platter. Now, biggest thing I've turned is a, I don't know, 12 inch bowl, something like that. So I needed to cut a circle out of this and I wanted to leave in it some of this gnarly, wany live edge on it. So I sent off for a circular um, disc of Perspex. Um, and I'm going to see if that's any good. My, my idea with this is, is to mark holes every 25 millimetres or so, all the way up to this hole. So 25 millimetre holes there, um, smaller holes. That's the smallest hole that the people that did the purse bits could do. So once I've done that, then I'll mark some circles on this with, I don't know, some sort of a permanent marker or something like this. Um, and I can use it as a jig that I can lay over and I can see the circles and decide how big I want to cut out of this piece of wood. But for now, I've only got these two to work on and I think that's going to be okay for what I want on here. So here's my jig. Hopefully you can see that. I don't want to be in your way. Let's move around here. Okay, so I'm going to find where I think I want the centre is. Let's go in the hole there, yeah. Can that do it? So I'm looking at the hole I've got in the outer edge. I'm going to use that. So it's missing that check down there. I think I can go down this way a little bit more. Let's start there. Yeah, that might be better. Okay, that's better. Keep that there. Turn around. I don't know what happened there, but I'll tell you what, I hit something really hard there. You see it's all burning there. Don't know what that was, it took a while to get through that. But anyway, <clears throat> let's have a look at that. Oh, smoking in there, I need to open up the door. There is my circular platter, and I think that's going to be nice. It's going to have some inclusion in there. Obviously as I turn it, the bark will come off. I want the bark off that, do I? It's actually stuck on there quite nicely. I'll leave it on there for now and see. I'm happy I've cut my platter out. I like that. Now let me think about what I'm going to do and I'll get back to you guys because I really don't know. Okay guys, so we've got the platter. We need now to try and figure out how we're going to mount it on the lathe. Now, um, it ain't going to go that way, that's for sure. Right, I feel good, I feel it. <coughs> I'm not even sure, that's quite heavy. I'm not sure if the lathe's going to be man enough to even spin it. It doesn't have to spin that fast, but that's what I'm worried about as well. Um, now I do know that this does swivel. Never swiveled it, but we'll give it a go. Somewhere in the middle, how do I turn it? If I put that on there roughly, oh yeah, it's just going to miss that bed, which is good. Because my concern is obviously, I then need to get this tool rest somehow over to the middle. I think it's going to have to be at 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think this is going to work, guys. Right, let's lock that down. How do you do that? Oh, you Have I got a dent in my forehead? Have I got a dent there, look? Have I got a dent? Oh, is that a cut? That really hurt, guys. Where did I hit it? Is it there? Oh yeah, look, I've got a dent there and a dent there. Oh, what a d Oh well. Bloody thing. Okay, guys, so we've got the platter here. Um, I've got a dent in my head where I hit the bloody camera mount above the lathe. We need to put the faceplate here for my lathe. So we know exactly where the centre is on this one. Because that's where I mark the circle from. Okay, let's go, fingers crossed. I'm gonna stand behind it and hope for the best. It's on the lowest speed. It's taken a while to spin up. Whoa! Woohoo! It's hitting the lathe bed. Why is it doing that? 
we'll get the plane out. And we'll give it a go. Okay, let's spin it back up and hope for the best. <laughs> it's not clipping it. It's wobbling all over the place. I'm not sure I'm going to like turning on it. That's frightening! <laughs> look at me, look at me, look at me! Oh, I didn't put my smock on! It's nice and round now. This is the rear of it. We're gonna face this off. It's the rear of it, but we'll give it a bit of a facing off. guys um that's not going so good i've only got a small i started with the uh so i started with a bowl gouge but because of all these knots see this knot here here when i hit this knot here of course it's really jumping off so um this is really hard to turn and it isn't flat um so what i'm going to do is use my uh, scraper but the problem is it's only a very small one like it's only what 15 mil 12 15 mil I don't really have anything bigger so I need to invest in some more tools but for now we're going to scrape with this to try and get this that I've messed up nice again. guys just got back from uh, Axminster Tools I drove to Basingstoke so it's about 45 minutes there 45 minutes back it's an hour and a half and I walked around the shop for half an hour but I pre-ordered this it's the Colossus 150 millimeter six inch jaws look at that looky 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 nice big dovetail in there 150 mil because I want to hold this I've never done anything this big I mean I'm not as nervous now when I first started this up I was hiding behind it like a big baby so now it's trued up um, Still slightly out of balance, and I can't turn the speed up much below number one on this lathe. However, I'm not frightened of it now. Um, but I didn't want to go and put my 50 millimeter dovetail jaws in there, so I've gone and got these Colossus ones. I mean, they did cost 65 quid from Axminster Tools, but do you know what? Axminster Tools do some good jaws. I like the chuck. I like these jaws they've got. They've got a good selection. So we're now cut into there 150 millimeter dovetail. Okay, so we'll set the compass to 75 mil. And then we can go and mark my circle to cut to. From
first time using the Axe Minister Bowl Sander. It spinny spins, whilst the lathe spinny spinning. So, ah, there we have it guys. The platter's off for now, we've got a nice dovetail in there. What we need to do is put the chuck on the lathe and then mount this in the lathe. <laughs> but before we do that, obviously we take this face plate off. Right, she's on there. Now let's turn it on and hope for the best. this I've got these big cracks here this crack here specifically I'm not so sure about these ones here um, but obviously they're not so I'm going to leave now this crack here I'm contemplating filling with copper powder now when I say copper I was thinking of gold and silver and someone online on Twitter said that copper looks really good with oak so I've gotten ordered some oak powder here 500 grams of oak uh, 500 grams of copper powder here what we need to do is just fill this crack up with some epoxy resin because what we don't want to do is to have to fill that entire void with copper powder. Okay, so I've got some quick setting epoxy resin. It's West Systems epoxy resin. That's going in nicely then. So that's filled that up nicely now. So we've got a nice lot of um, quick setting epoxy in there. We'll let that dry and then we won't take up so much copper powder when we go to fill it. To use that as an applicator. Oh yeah, that worked. So we'll let that now dry.
Right, come on then, let's go. That's all sucked up, let's stick it back on the lathe and then we can apply some tongue oil. So I've applied the first coat of tongue oil, we'll let that dry overnight, then in the morning we'll give it a denib with 600 grit sandpaper, and then we'll give it a second coat. We'll probably end up giving it four, five, six coats, not sure exactly, maybe three, who knows. Don't know, make it up as I go. I think it's looking good, so that's it for tonight. See you tomorrow. Okay, so there we have it. It's just had its final coat of tongue oil. Let's take it off the lathe and we'll have a closer look. <coughs> <laughs> I like it, I like it, I like it. There we go guys, there's my Pippi Oak wall art. It's 595 millimeters, which is about 23 and a quarter inches uh, in diameter. Um, it's got the copper inlays in here in some of these cracks. I didn't do it in all of them. And it's had four, five coats. It's had five coats of tongue oil on it and that's now dried out. Um, and on the rear also, oh yes, I need to oil that. Okay, let me oil that then. Okay, I forgot about that. Whoops. Nice coat of oil in there. There's the rear. As you can see, I've also put copper inlay. I've also infilled all the cracks on the rear with copper, uh, just in case anyone ever turns it around. So there we have it. I just need to think of a name for it now. Got no idea. If you've got any ideas what I could call this, comment below for me. I'd really appreciate it. I need to come up with a name for it. It's made out of oak, as I said, pippy oak, and it's got copper uh, inlays in it or copper infills in it. So there we have it. Next thing I need to do really is just put some sort of mounting bracket on the rear. Um, need to figure that one out. So thanks very much for watching. I look forward to working with Baxman Workshop soon. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, don't give it a thumbs down. Just move on to the next one. Thanks very much. If you're a subscriber already, thanks very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. It would really be helpful.